Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we have part three for Azure Data Factory interview questions, where we are going to discuss about all the interview questions we have in Azure Data Factory and slowly and steadily with each part, we will try to increase the complexity of the questions. And at the same time, we will try to include scenario based questions as well. So the very first question that we have for today is what are the different activities you have used in the data factory? So this is also one of the very common interview questions, which is asked in almost all of the interviews. So by this question, interviewer actually wants to understand like what all activities you have been more familiar with. And in fact, if you have used data factory very often, you should be able to name quite a lot of activities. So I have just named a few activities here in the slides so that you do understand that you have copy data activity. Uh, where you can actually use this copy data activity to copy simply copy the data from one source to target right and we have discussed about this copy data activity in our previous video as well now then you have for each activity so something that you want to execute in a loop in that case some set of activities that you want to do inside uh, you know a for loop in that case you go ahead and use for each activity similarly you have a metadata activity so let's say you have a source data set and you want to derive some information about that source data set, right? Some metadata information about that source data set. Then you have this metadata activity and a very useful one as well. Similarly, you have a set variable activity where you actually define a variable and a value toward that variable. Similarly, you have a lookup activity where you can get the output, uh, you know, maybe through a query or you, you can try to get a singleton output from any, uh, let's say, uh, any table as well. So similarly, you have a wait activity. Wait activity as the name signifies, it allows your pipeline to wait for some time. So the time depends on whatever you specify inside this wait activity. Similarly, you have a validation activity. Again, it is a very simple, whatever you, know, you can grab from, from the name itself, that is true. So similarly for the validation activity, it just validates the presence of your files, right? You just define that this is my data set and just validate whether it is present or not, right? So that is what is the use of your validation activity. Similarly, you have your web activity and your webhook activity. So these are usually used to trigger your HTTP request. We will talk about this as well in our upcoming uh, you know, interview questions video, we will have a hands on a little bit of hands on also on the same. Similarly, you have your until activity similar, like it's, it's a very simple, you know, until condition. And similarly, you have your if or a filter activity as well. So these are a few activities that you should definitely name whenever this question is asked. And do remember whatever activities you name based on that questions will definitely follow. So let's say you name any of these activities, then definitely you will come up. Uh, you will see that this questions come up that can you execute a for each inside another for each activity. Now you understand that you have named for each to the interviewer already that you have used for each activity. Now definitely interviewer is going to ask you this question about a for each uh, for each activity because for anybody who has worked on for each should know that right a for each cannot be looped inside a for each you cannot execute a for each inside a for each so do remember that this is a very nice interview question that definitely comes up similarly when you talk about metadata um, people will definitely ask you what are different metadata options that you get in metadata activity right so now again for this in fact for um, you know, I'll go back to the portal and uh, let us try to drag and drop each of these activities that we have talked and we see so that we remember more, right? So the more we see, the more we'll remember rather than going through the slides, right? So similarly, you have this copy data activity that we have talked about. And then we are going to talk about, let's say, um, get metadata activity, right? So this get, a, get metadata activity are usually a very favorite interview questions for most of the people. When you talk about this get metadata activity, if you see, you define some data set, right? What is data set and all about data set we have already discussed. 
Now, if you click on new option over here, you will see in the field list, there are list of fields. So sometimes interviewers tries to understand that if you have worked in data factory a lot, then in that case, you know what the, you, you will usually remember at least few of them easily, right? Because these comes in very handy. Now in get metadata activity, it will help you to get uh, the item names, right? What is the, um, you know, what is the name of the file or what is the name of the folder that is present in the data set what you have mentioned over here? What is the type of the item? Is it a folder? It is a file. What is the type, right? Similarly, the last modified date. What is the last modified date of the file? Like, let's say I have mentioned a binary file over here. So uh, it can fetch you when was this last modified. Similarly, it can help you to find the size of the file, right? So, and whether that file exists, file or folder exists or not. So based on these uh, inputs, you can actually go ahead and do something else, right? So you need to remember this for sure because this is a very important interview questions. Now, similarly, you have this, uh, let's say we have talked about set variable, right? So uh, let me drag and drop the set variable. So this is again a set variable activity which you can use and you can provide it, you know, any way you can set the, in fact, uh, regarding variables, I will talk about variables in the upcoming interview question series. Uh, then uh, most probably you will understand the set variable better. So similarly, you have these delete activity where you want to delete something, you can delete it. Similarly, you have this wait activity where you can specify the wait time in second. Let's say you want your pipeline to wait for 150 seconds. So in that case, your pipeline will wait for 150 seconds, right? So let me go back to the, um, you know, slide right now. And you can see that these are the same um, configurations that we have actually seen in the portal just now, right? We have seen the column count exist, last modified date. So all these things are actually present. And in get metadata, you can specify data set. Data set can be your file or your folder, right? And then you can get the information about the file or the folder through get metadata activity. Similarly, you also uh, might be asked about this question, right? If you want to use the output by executing a query, which activity shall you use? So now if you want to execute a query and you want to get an output from that query, what kind of, uh, you know, transformation or what kind of uh, activity you will use? So it's not a transformation, although it's a activity only. So lookup activity is the answer here. So if I go back to the portal and I try to open the lookup activity, in this case, you will actually see that you have your lookup over here, right? So in this lookup, you can actually see, yeah, I can give ahead my source data set, whatever my source data set can be, I can give my source data set and then I can actually try to execute a query over here in my source data set. So this can be a table. So let's say I'm trying to go to a database. So right now I do not have a data set. That is why it is not appearing over here. But the moment you have a data set, let's say you, you go to a database and you want to get output based on a particular table, right? So you can write ahead your query and you can get the output in your lookup. So you need to understand. So why these questions are asked basically to understand that whether you know the use of each and every activity or not. So in case you do not know any activity, then in that case, you should directly say that you do not know know that particular activity or you have not used it right so you should remember that thing now similarly uh, you know again to understand whether you have used a particular activity or not you will be again asked how do you verify the presence of file in a storage so let's say this is also a very common scenario so in most of your projects you will require um, you know to check whether the file is present or not only when the pres uh, the file is present then only will start and execute your activity right so in that case you you need to know that validation activity is used for the same so this question actually helps interviewer understand that yes you have used this particular scenario you have this but you have used this particular activity as well so if you see over here in the validation uh, if you see in this uh, settings option, so I have, uh, you know, a file already, right? So in this particular file, I can actually ask, you know, what this validation is doing. This is going to this particular file and it is actually checking whether this file is present or not. 
so based on that it will give you a go or no go right so that is how it works your validation activity works and then you can link your validation activity let's say to anything else right you can link it like this to the set variable or anything right green means that it has successfully executed so similarly there are other options as well like we are since we are doing interview series i do not want to explain each of these so time out as in like it will try to you know uh check for uh you know for a for, for a particular number of days days hours seconds whatever you specify so right now it will actually go ahead and check for let's say seven days whether a file is present or not so you need to uh, you know configure your time out as well in uh, you know a particular um whatever you want right you you might want to check uh, the uh, presence of this file for let's say five seconds six seconds five minutes or whatever you can specify it over here so this is your validation activity now similarly we have the next question regarding the notebooks right so let me make it to yeah so now have you used execute notebook activity see so most of the projects they will use databricks for sure so when they use databricks so most of the time uh you know uh, they will definitely have this particular, uh, you know, usage in their pro project. So that is why they might ask you this question as well that have you used is execute notebook activity or not? Okay, so most of the time, like it is a very basic thing, right? So you should say yes, and you should learn about it for sure in case you don't know. So now how do you pass parameters to your notebooks in execute notebook activity? So when I say pass parameters, so let's say you have a notebook inside the, in Databricks. Now you call that notebook in data factory using execute notebook activity. So in fact, let me go back to the portal and show you over here itself. Mm, let me go up and then if you see in the Databricks option, you have this notebook option, right? So if you drag and drop this notebook option, you will actually see that it will ask you for the link service, concept of link service and everything I've already explained to you, right? So once you define the link service, once you define the location, uh, the once you define the connection, connection is link service, right? So once you define the connection of your data breaks, then it will ask you for the exact notebook path, and then there will be there will be an option of you know specifying your base parameters, and let's say in case you want to add some libraries, then in that case you have an option here. So you need to know that in case you want to pass any parameters to the notebook, right? So this is a code, right? It needs any parameters. In that case, you can pass the parameter and the value over here. Now, let's say your notebook is using, now this is again a question. Now, let's say your notebook is using some parameters and you have not specified it over here. In that case, what will happen is default parameters which are present inside the notebook, that parameters will be used. So you need to understand that as well. So these are the few questions that are mostly asked. These are like most, most, most asked questions. And, you know, uh, I'll, I'll try to bring, I'll try to increase the complexity slowly and steadily so that everybody understands what these, uh, you know, each and every question everybody should understand, even if someone is new, in the, new to the data factory in that case as well. That is why I'm even showing you the portal so that, you know, it is easy to understand because, you know, going through slides is you know uh, it doesn't may make sense right you should uh, in fact go and visually see it to remember it better now thank you so much for being till here this was pretty much that i wanted to cover in this particular video do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for being till here